guys. Today we're going to do multi-step conversions with moles. You're going to need a calculator, your periodic table, your map of Moleville, and your follow-along notes. We're going to do two sample problems, and then there's a packet up that you guys can do on your own. The answers are up front, so you are welcome to use the answer key, and that way you can check yourself, make sure you're doing things right before you get too far. All right, here's our first problem. What is the mass of a sample made of 7.3 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of carbon dioxide? So what is our known here? Our known is 7.3 times 10 to the 23rd molecules carbon dioxide. That's what you actually have in the lab. So that's where we're starting. And on Moleville, if you look at the map, where is that? Well, what's our unit? This is our number, here's our unit, and here's our formula for NUF. We have NUF in here, number, unit, formula. Unit is what you're going to find on Moleville. So that's molecules. It's over here. So we want the mass. Mass is over here. We're going to convert this to grams. So to get from the high school to the mass, you can't just go straight there. You have to take the roads. So here's one road, or the first unit converter that we're going to use. We're going to go to Mole City Hall, and then you're going to take another road or unit converter to get up to the mansions. So let's write it out, but before you do anything, notice that it has molar mass as part of the problem. So before you start the problem, let's just figure out the molar mass of carbon dioxide so you don't have to break up the problem and do it then. So CO2 has one carbon and two oxygens. So you do the math. One times 12, because 12.0 is the mass of carbon, plus two times 16.0. Remember, it is 15.99 on the periodic table, but we're saving to one decimal place. So it was 15.99, but the second 9 gets cut, but it bumps the first 9, changing it to 10. You add the 1 to the 5, this is a 0. Um, put this into your calculator, and that'll give you 44 grams. So every 44 grams is 1 mole. All right, now we're going to do our stoichiometry calculations. Those are our x lines. Write your known first and then an X line. So we're here, we're in Representative Parkville High School. The first thing we hit is Avogadro's number. So that goes on the bottom. You can't write representative particles, it has to be the particle you're using, so molecules. And then don't forget the formula is still CO2. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecule CO2 goes on the bottom, one mole of CO2 goes on the top. Now that we have this, we can start to do some cancellations. So molecules of CO2 are on the top and the bottom. So if I have a unit and formula that's the same on the top and the bottom, I can cancel. So now that we have that canceled and we're in moles, we have to travel from Mole City Hall to Mass Mansions. So here's our unit converter. Whenever we travel a road, we do an X line. The first thing you hit goes on the bottom. So for every one mole of carbon dioxide, you have the molar mass of carbon dioxide. We found that to be 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Cancel unit and formulas that are the same. And now we're left with just numbers and one unit, which is the grams of carbon dioxide. Do the math, here it is. Here's it all laid out for you. So multiply by things on the top, divide by anything on the bottom, grams of CO2, and that'll get you 53 grams of carbon dioxide. In our next problem, we have 8.07 times 10 to the fourth grams of sodium hydroxide. And we want to know how many formula units this is. So here is our known, 8.07 times 10 to the fourth grams of sodium hydroxide. So if you look on your map of Moleville, where is grams? Well, it's right here in Mass Mansions. And we want to convert it to formula units. So you have to find formula units on your map. So formula units is right here. It's at the Representative Particle High School. And if you look to get from the mansions to the high school, you have to take these two roads. On these roads, we're passing molar mass. So let's go ahead and solve for the molar mass so we don't have to break up our problem later. So sodium hydroxide has one sodium, one oxygen, and one hydrogen. So it's kind of an easy one. You've got 23.0 for sodium, 16.0 for oxygen, and 1.0 for hydrogen. Add those up and you get 40.0 grams. Okay, so now we can do our stoichiometry calculations, and in that you always write your known first. So we have 8.07 times 10 to the fourth grams of sodium hydroxide. Here it is, grams over in the mansions. So we're going to take this road, which is our unit converter. The first thing you see is what you divide by. So we're going to put molar mass on the bottom of our X line. So 40.0 grams of sodium hydroxide. Double check yourself, are you putting all three parts of everything you list? So are you putting the number, the unit, and the formula? Don't forget, 
enough number unit formula. On top goes whatever you hit next on the road, so one mole for our number and unit, and NaOH is our formula. Now that we're done writing our unit converter, we can check to make sure things cancel. So do you have a unit and a formula that's the same on the top and the bottom? Yeah, you've got grams of sodium hydroxide, so those two cancel. We're now in moles. If you look here, our unit is moles. We're hanging out in Mole City Hall. That's not our final destination, so we have to take this other uh, road here. So we have another X line. The first thing you hit is what you divide by. So divide by one mole sodium hydroxide, multiply by Avogadro's number and representative particles. We're using formula units as our representative particle because this is um, a, an ionic compound. Sodium is a metal, so it's going to be made of formula units. So 6.02 times 10 to the 24th, 23rd formula units of sodium hydroxide. We can cancel moles of sodium hydroxide we're left with formula units as our only unit, so that's great. Here's the math, 8.07 times 10 to the fourth, times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that's all divided by 40 formula units, NaOH is our unit. All right, type this into your calculator. You should get 1.12 times 10 to the 27th formula units of sodium hydroxide. Good luck on doing your practice problems and make sure you talk to a teacher if you have any questions.